Good afternoon, everyone. Greenbelt Environmental Educator, Christopher Rickert here. We are shortly going to be running our next Greenbelt at Home virtual program. So welcome for folks that are already here. We're just gonna give it another minute or so just to make sure everyone can join us and we're not having any technical difficulties at home. Again, uh, we're super excited to offer all of these Greenbelt at Home virtual programs, given uh, we're moving into the 2021 year and things are still a little uncertain, but we're able to continue through technology to offer these really meaningful environmental education programs to all of you at home. So if you are joining us for the first time, welcome to our virtual programs. If you are a reoccurring uh, patron of the Greenbelt, whether physically hiking our trails or just visiting our virtual Greenbelt Ed programs. Welcome. We're super excited to have you all today. And it is with great honor that we are able to introduce Christopher Rommel, who's our uh, Greenbelt environmental educator who works down here at the Nature Center. So a lot of the times on these virtual programs, you see us out on hikes, out and about on the 35 miles of trails in the 2,800 acres of Greenbelt but today we are at the nexus of all things Greenbelt here at the Greenbelt Nature Center, which is at the corner of Rockland and Briel Avenue. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Chris Rommel to introduce today's virtual program. Hi everybody, good afternoon, good to see you. It's actually quite a beautiful day here at the Nature Center. And do you know why it's a beautiful day for me? It's National Squirrel Appreciation Day. It's such a great day to, to, to appreciate our little, our little squirrels in the trees, maybe you see them in the park, maybe right outside your windowsill, give them a good wave, because it's Squirrel Appreciation Day. They deserve it. As you can see, I'm in the mood to celebrate it. I got my little friends right here on my table, say hi to them, um, and I got my board in the back ready for you guys to see how much I really love the squirrels of the green belt. As you can see, they're all in different settings. They can be anywhere. They can be in a tree, they can be in a little, little bucket. See him peeking out, he's really cute. And if you look into the tree, where is the little squirrel? You see, you see a raccoon, an owl, Oh, there he is at the top of the trees, at the top of the castle in his little nest, sitting up there looking over everything. And if you look over here, you see one taking a selfie of himself. He's looking really cute. He can take a picture of himself. And then this one's really, really hungry, so he's uh, kind of munching on a snack right there. They're really cool animals. I really, really love squirrels. I think they're one of the most underappreciated squirrels in the animal kingdom. And I think, I think that's because we see them every single day. Look how they're, look how they're always in our business, how they're always uh, coming, or coming into our yard, into our house, always in our trees. But what do squirrels do? Like, do you know anything about them? What, what do they eat? What do they like doing? And what do they provide to the environment? Like, how do they help the environment? Well, luckily for you, I'm going to answer all those questions for you, so stick around and see what makes squirrels so special. Now, squirrels can come in, oh, any, uh, squirrels can come in all sizes. Some can come as tiny as a little mouse, like this little creature right here, or in some cases, they can come in the size of a big house cat, just like this big guy right here. He's had his fair share of nuts, right? But they can come in many different sizes. Most of the time they'll be smaller in Staten Island, but you can definitely see them bigger than others. Now, um, what about the squirrel? What, what can they do? Uh, so, everyone, when you think of a squirrel, what might you think? What's the first thing you see? For some people, especially myself, I think of their big bushy tail. It looks really cute and really furry. What does it do for them? It actually serves a few purposes. Well. Tails for all the animals actually act as a balancing rod, so every time they're walking, they can use it to kind of, when they walk in the branches on a tree, they use it to kind of balance themselves. So if they're trying to, if they're about to fall, they can use the tail to kind of uh, keep themselves on the tree and stay safe. They can also use it, maybe you might want to think about this, as an umbrella. This tail is as big as the squirrel itself, 
and during, sun, or during rainy days, it can cover itself to stay dry. Or even in the hot summer days, to protect itself from the sun, it can cover itself and go to sleep like that. It's, uh, they, they don't have the money to buy an umbrella from the store, so thankfully nature has provided them with their own natural umbrella. What else about a, a, a squirrel is unique? Well, on their fingers and their feet, their front paws have four fingers actually, not five, but their feet actually have five. That's pretty strange, right? So you see one, two, three, four, five, and on their paw, one, two, three, four. Hmm, that's really strange. But their nails are really razor sharp. That's, what, that's how they get up those trees really fast. So they dig their nails into those trees and they get up really, really fast. And they can, and they can also use it to climb the bricks on houses. They're really, really, really advanced climbers, much faster than any humans, and much longer nails as well. What else about a squirrel might you notice? Mm, maybe, I don't know. Um, let, me, let me think. Well, their eyes, actually. Their eyes are on either side of their head. They're actually a little further apart. They can actually see almost 360 view, which is really neat because we can only see in front of us. Can you imagine seeing having eyes in the back of your head? Did you know that? That's just, the, that's, that's their way of seeing predators come at them and they can scurry away. They're really good at that. Remember, they use their nails to turn up the tree. And also, did you know that squirrels love to play with each other? They love having recreational time just like humans. So in your, uh, if you look at squirrels on a tree, they might be scurrying around a tree, playing tag and trying to chase each other and just have some fun. Animals have fun too. People don't think that. But animals really love to, to, to play. It's not, it's not just about surviving eating food. So try to notice that the next time you squirrel watch. So what do squirrels like to eat? Well, if you've been paying attention, these guys are doing what they, they eat right, or eating what they like right now, and that's nuts. They can eat any nuts like peanuts, pecans, any type of nut you throw at them, they'll eat. And they actually um, would like to eat other fruits and some vegetables, but nuts is probably their most preferred. And they can actually also store their nuts in their cheeks for later, and uh, they can fit a lot. Of, they can fit a lot in there. And if, uh, if if you want a good example, here's here's if I was in, if I was a squirrel, here's what I would look like with the nuts stored in my mouth. Ready? One, two. Can you do that? Can you make pretend that you have you're storing uh, nuts in your mouth? Ready? One, two. <laughs> That's a, they can even store more than what I can, what I can do right there. They can go maybe like one or two times more than what I can do. But they also like to uh, they, uh, they also like to keep the nuts in the mouth just for later consumption. Pop quiz time. I'm sorry if I scared you right there. We're not in school right now, but I actually have this fun board over here that actually will teach you more about squirrels in a fun way. You're not getting graded. Don't worry. So, Squirrel Appreciation Day quiz. I have six questions for you. If you get all six right, congratulations, you're a squirrel expert. If not, you're here to learn. That's perfect. We're always here to the Nature Center to learn some more. So, if, I'm going to read over the questions first, and, and if you want to answer the questions in the chat below, go ahead and do that. But I'll read the questions first and answer them after this, after that on the second time. So, question number one. What do squirrels forget that they bury in the ground? You have A, their toys, B, their nuts, C, their money. Hmm, take a good second to think about that. Number two, what never stopped growing on a squirrel? A, their teeth, B, their feet, or C, their tail? That's kind of a tricky one. That's one of the more harder questions. Think about that for a minute. Number three. What do squirrels keep? Uh, what do squirrels do to keep warm in the winter? They either a make a fire, b put on a sweater, or c they gain some weight. Next board, question number four. This is a true or false. So true or false? Squirrels were once arrested after they were suspected of being spies. Can you imagine them in their little squirrel handcuffs? That's a true or false question. Back to multiple choice, number five. How many species of squirrels are there 
in the world. You have A, over 200, B, 465 bajillion, or C, I don't know, what is, what is a squirrel? I don't know, I'm just learning about them today. Number six, squirrels use sticks and leaves to make their homes. What are these homes called? Is it A, a treehouse, B, a nest, and C, a dray? Little hint, Angel, our other educator, actually made a video about this. So if you watch that video, you might have an idea of what the answer is. All right, so take a second to maybe write all your answers in the chat below. Think about it. A few more seconds. Playing the Jeopardy theme song. Da -da -da -da. All right. Back to question number one. Answer number one. What do squirrels forget that they bury in the ground? Toys, nuts, or money? If you answered B, you would be 100% correct. I don't, I don't think squirrels use money, but B, nuts, is correct. Actually, fun fact, squirrels bury so many nuts in the ground that they might, uh, that, they, that they forget that they bury them, and uh, they leave them there for so long that the nuts actually start to grow into trees. So a lot of the trees you see in the forest might have been because of squirrels leaving it there. They also they hide their nuts in there to, to hide it from predators or other other animals that would steal it from them. And they actually help the environment growing new trees. Who knew about that? That's pretty cool. Number two, what never stops growing a squirrel? This one's a little tricky. Some people might say tail, but it is actually their teeth. Yes, it's their teeth. Did you imagine if our teeth never stopped growing? And how do, some people might ask, how does the teeth not continually grow forever? Well, actually, when they eat, um, when they're eating on their nuts, it actually shaves their teeth a little bit. So that's called gnawing. So I'm gonna show you right now how they gnaw, if you wanna repeat after me. So go pretend you have a nut in your hand and go. Can you do that slower? How about really, really, really fast? But that's basically what a squirrel does to eat their food. They eat it really, really fast. It's really cute to watch in the video if you ever look. Number three, what do squirrels do to keep warm in the winter? I mean, I don't think their mothers knit sweaters for them, but I do think they gain some weight. C is the right answer. So in the winter, food gets really, really scarce, and squirrels need to eat a lot to survive in the winter. He kind of, the squirrel after a while, will look like my friend here. So he can start really, really tiny, and then he can bulk up for the winter. That way he doesn't have to eat so, or to find food so much. Really cool stuff, right? Number four, true or false, squirrels were once arrested after they were suspected of being spies. Believe it or not, it's actually true. In another country, uh, government officials thought that squirrels had little cameras on them to spy on them, to kind of get information on them. And that's actually happened before. People have used pigeons and other animals like that to, to spy on them. And I think it's your, and I, it's, I laugh to myself when I think about the little squirrel in handcuffs or something like that. Um, but it's really true. Number five, how many species of squirrels are there in the world? If you've answered 40, 465 bajillion, you should stay in school because that's not a real number. And what is a squirrel? That's a good answer for Jeopardy, but we're not playing Jeopardy. Answer is A, over 200. A few squirrels on Staten Island is the Eastern Gray Squirrel, and you have the Flying Squirrel, which actually not, doesn't really fly, but once it jumps off a tree, it glides through the air with all the excess skin. And believe it or not, the Woodchuck is actually a family member of the squirrel. Can you repeat that tongue twister about the Woodchuck? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck a woodchuck could chuck wood? I still got it. Number six, last but not least. Squirrels use sticks and leaves to make their homes. What are these homes called? Some people may have gotten tricked with the nest answer. It's not technically wrong, but they're really called a dray. They gather, if, uh, they're especially noticeable in the winter when all the leaves are down, and you see clumps of leaves still left under the tree. They come with Hot chocolate and HGTVs in there too. It's a really nice home. But uh, yes, if you, uh, they're called a dray. 
Congratulations if you got all six right. And I put on the bottom, even if you didn't get it all right, Sam the squirrel still believed in you. The only squirrel known to mankind that lives under the ocean, but not in a pineapple. So congratulations if you got all six correct. If you didn't, try again. Maybe you'll get all six next time. So that was really fun. I had a lot of fun making that. But here, uh, I want to show you guys a special book. I want to get to the meat of this program. And I want to show you a special story that I really hold near and dear to my heart about squirrels. It is called Nuts to You by Lois Ellert. Now, Easter egg, this squirrel was actually featured in the book we did last month about making snowmen. And this squirrel is actually climbing up the snowman, and it's actually not a coincidence because Lois Ellert was the same author, which is really cool. We get to continue with Lois Ellert's novel universe here. And this is actually going to be a true story, if you come close, about the author. Author Lois Ellert loves watching squirrels from the windows of her studio while she works. Nuts to You was inspired by an actual experience she had with one of the squirrels in her Milwaukee neighborhood. So this really happened to her, which is really cool, and it can happen to you as well. Are you guys ready to read? I hope so. Page one. All right. I'll wait a while. He could be shy, or maybe he likes it way up high. Talking about the squirrel, she can't find it. Where could it be? Look, here he comes. Trying to hide, he can't wait to get inside. He's trying to sneak in our home. Will he get there? We'll find out. He's in the flowers. He's really bad. He's digging a bulb. My mom is mad. She, her, her mom really worked hard on these flowers and he's trying to tear it apart. You see him running away with the bulb. That's a naughty squirrel right there. But he's hungry. So hungry, in fact, there he goes, up the bricks on his claws. He steals seeds and eats with his paws. Now, if you notice, he's stealing the seeds from the goldfinches here. Does this one here look happy that he's the squirrel's stealing? He kind of looks annoyed, actually. He doesn't look too happy. He's looking down. He's like, hey, what are you doing with those seeds? And the squirrel runs away. Walking on tiptoe, tail held high. He brushes my, my plants as he zips on by. And if you notice, Mom planted all these plants. And look what he did. Look what he did. He took a bite of the tomato. She was going to eat that tonight for dinner. So rude. But he's so hungry. What can he do? In our window box, watching us eat, he sits on the flowers and begs for a treat. You see him looking on the windowsill, tapping on the window there. Let me in, please. Let's see what happens next. I opened my window for some fresh air, but I forgot that the screen had a tear. Oh no, if you see, where's the screen, where's the tear? Oh no, it's right there, it's like an inch long. Well, you can, if you ever open the window in the summer, you know that anything can get through that. Let's see what happens next. Oh no, when I came back, guess what I found? That squirrel was there looking around. And you see him looking in the mirror with all this stuff that a little boy might take later. He got in. What else is he going to do next? So, so I got some nuts, ran out the door, tapped one on the sidewalk, and left a few more. So remember what I said, how squirrels love nuts? The author is doing the right thing, providing nuts to distract the squirrel to get out. And I want you guys to yell or repeat after me when we read the line. So the, the line is, nuts to you, just like the title of the story. When we get to that part, I want you to yell it as loud as you can, all right? Promise me, right? Nuts to you, I shouted as loud as I could. That squirrel peeked at, I knew he would. So she was trying to get that squirrel's attention to get out of the house with those peanuts. And you see the bird was a little surprised by our, our shouting as he dropped his little seed. But here comes the squirrel. He looked to the left. He looked to the right. He ran down the brick and took a big bite. And you go, 
<laughs> big bite. <laughs> he ate all those nuts, then scampered away. But he'll get hungry again someday. So we so we fed him for now. Let's see what happens next. I'll keep nuts in my pockets, one or two, and when I see them, I'll say, shout it out, nuts to you! And that is our story. I really enjoyed that. Applaud yourself for following along in and following the squirrel. But I really enjoy that book because it has a really good moral to me. All stories have morals, and it's up to your interpretation of what moral you found out of it. Um, my interpretation is how to treat wild animals with, with grace and with respect. Did you see how the author, instead of shouting at the, 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 the squirrel and trying to hit it and trying to be violent, actually found a different approach? She knew what it liked, left some nuts outside for it to go chase, and then that was it. She didn't make a, make a fuss out of it, and the squirrel left the home and hopefully fixed that tear in her window so no more squirrels get in. But she also carried more nuts in her pocket for later, just in case she came across any, of, any more squirrels. I like that lesson. It teaches us to respect nature, not just squirrels, and, and it makes us kinder. That's, that's what I like. I also forgot to mention, if you are going to feed squirrels, I know it's a little cute to maybe feed them on your hand, but squirrels, don't, don't forget, are wild animals. They're not house pets. They can, they can scratch you with those razor-sharp uh, nails, like I told you before. They can even bite you. So it might, be, it might seem rude, but you can just toss the, the, the nuts on the ground, and then they can, they can find it themselves. If you go to the park, same thing. Just toss them on the ground and just watch from afar. They're really cute to watch as they eat. You remember all that gnawing? Like... So that was Nuts to You by Lois Eller. I really enjoyed that book. But I have one more thing for you before we wrap up our School Appreciation Day. Craft time! And this craft is actually, you've been looking at it the whole time. He's hiding over here. And he's a really simple hand puppet that I made with my friend Jessica. And so, it's only just a brown paper bag and some construction paper. And you can see, you can make it talk and see what you want. Thank you for appreciating me on Squirrel Day. And he has his, uh, his white belly that you can draw on. I'll get to that in just a sec. And don't forget his little tail. So I actually have the materials here for you to watch, or to, for you to look at. So like I said, you have your brown paper bag. And I'm going to show you how to make these intricate little pieces that make his face and his tail. So you want only brown and white construction paper. So when you so I'll lay out the materials for you. So if you take a closer look, you have his face, which is actually a heart but turned upside down. You have his teeth. You can make the letter B. His belly, a large oval like an egg. You have his eyes, his or her eyes. You can make googly eyes, you can make your own eyes, as big or small as you want. And you have its ears. It could be the shape of a thumb. See, that's how I measured it. These are very simple measurements here. And then you have its nose. An another upside down heart that you can put on him. Or her. Um, so, the, um, you can do this no matter, er, and the tail. It can be just a long, a long D-shaped uh, tail. So this is going to be really simple. You can make this however you want. The only thing that you put down first is the teeth, because you want the teeth on the inside of the, the squirrel's mouth. I don't, I don't remember any teeth on the outside, but first time for everything. So then you can put anything else in any order. You can put the ears in front, you can put the nose lower, higher. Just make sure that the heart shape is upside down. So when you see those cheeks, that the squirrels like to store their nuts, they're in the right place, remember that, right? And then you just draw little whiskers on it, and then make sure to glue the tail in the back. So, um, uh, this, this is good for any age, and as you notice, I left its little belly there blank for, uh, for decoration purpose. You can, make, you can make this as realistic or as imaginative as you want. 
For me, I'm gonna go with my imagination. So I'm gonna make my squirrel a super squirrel. So I'm just gonna draw a little S here. Color it in a little bit. That's my S for super squirrel. And then I'm gonna draw some stars on it for, for effect. These are the best stars I can draw. I'm not, I'm not such a great artiste. But use your imagination, do whatever you want. And there is my super squirrel. So he, he's actually gonna be a flying squirrel to me because remember I said that squirrels can't fly, but the flying squirrel can kind of glide through the air like a superhero and go from tree to tree. And you can hang this up anywhere. You can use this with your friends, make a puppet show. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> it's really, really cool. And, and go as in-depth as you want. You can color anything. You can make any different colors you want. Color the brown bag. Up to you. I don't want to limit anyone's imagination. Go wild. This is your project. But that's about it. I had a lot of fun today doing all this. It's really good acting like a kid again and just being silly. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't have a squirrel come to the window today. But I'm going to go looking for them later after this. Don't worry. I'm mean, looking for those Dre. Remember up there? So um, I hope you enjoyed this show. If you'd, like to, uh, if you'd like to show pictures of the squirrel puppets that you made, you can uh, show them to us at our Facebook page at SI Greenwealth Education. Or uh, you can, and if you want to learn, if you want to see more videos about further learning virtually, you can go to our Facebook page at Staten Island Greenbelt. And you can also visit our website at sigreenbelt.org. So we have plenty of different videos that show educational learning and crafts and all that stuff. So I hope you guys visit us. My name is Christopher Rommel. And happy Squirrel Day, everybody. Bye-bye.